Hi friends, in this video, let's talk about how to check list of jobs and their schedules in the SQL Server 2016. This is one of the important concept for the SQL Server developers, SQL Server production support people and ETL developers. How to check? First of all, what are all the jobs which are available in the system or in the server or what are their schedules? Either it is enabled or disabled. See, I already have a couple of jobs in my server, but let me show you how to create a job quickly. Then I will show you either this newly created job is enabled or scheduled or disabled in a practical way. Let me go to SQL Server Management Studio. Let me open that. Yeah, here I have two jobs. If you see this, one is a sample job. The other one is Sys Policy Registry. There are two jobs are there as of now in my SQL Server. Let me refresh and show you. Yes, there are two. Let me create one more and I'll show you either this job is coming in our list or not. So it's easy. If you want a detailed information, so please check my earlier videos. I explained in a detailed manner how to create a job and how to call a job from a SQL Server procedure and how to see either job is running or not and how to see an error message if any of the job fails. Please check my earlier videos for the detailed explanation. So here our concentration is how to see list of jobs and their schedules. Let me create a new job here. So let, let's right click on a jobs. Click on new job. Once you click on job, it will ask for the job name. So I will be giving the name as test job. I can give whatever the name I want. So here I'm giving description as this is for uh, jobs testing. Whatever the description I want, I can give it. But ideally in the real time, we give the purpose of the job. So the purpose of the job might be pulling the data from like a business places or it is inserting a data into finance tables or something like that we'll be keeping here. Right. And if you observe very closely, there is an enabled button in the bottom. Okay. By default, it is to be checked. If you click on this, the job, even though you create, it will be in disabled mode. We will talk about that later. Let's go with a default one. Let's come to the steps. See, this is a place where you are going to tell to the job what needs to be executed in the job. So let's add the steps. Let's click on new and here the step name. So get employees, get employees, whatever the name I want, I can give it. It should be a meaningful name. When I say whatever the name, it should be relevant name to the query where I am going to write. Here the type, I am going with a transit SQL script. So it supports multiple one. So it supports like operating system command exes, PowerShell, replication related stuff, SQL Server analysis services and SQL Server integration services and SQL Server direct queries here. Now here my database name, I want to run something on the sample database. That is the reason I selected database as sample. If you want to run something on MSDB, then go with it. No need to change anything. Now command. So whatever the command you are writing, command is nothing but a SQL Server query. That query should be error free. So simply I am keeping select star from EMP. Whatever the query I want, I can keep here. So simply see my purpose is to see the list of jobs and their schedules. My purpose is not to observe the output of the query. Okay. But the query should be error free. So once you're okay, so there is an advanced option in the advanced option. So there are two options on success action. Go to the next step on failure action. Quit the job reporting failure. You need to be very careful about these options. So depends on your requirement. You need to change these options on success. If you have any other steps, you will be saying as yes, go to next step. Otherwise quit the job reporting success on failure action. Quit the job reporting failure. It is up to us. Let's click on OK. 
So now this is how we add steps to the job. Next one is schedules. So let's click on new. <clears throat> Here the name of the schedule. So you can give it as a test job schedule just to understand easily. <clears throat> and here schedule type. See you have multiple things. One time recurring whenever CPU become ideal start automatically when SQL Server agent starts. I will go with recurring. After that there is a occurs. <clears throat> either weekly, daily or monthly. I want to run only on the weekdays. Okay, so now let's put it as daily or weekly. You can check when you say weekly, you can check only on the working days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Thursday. So I'm, I'm not going to check Saturday and Sunday. So it means that my job is going to run only five days a week. <coughs> And at what time you want to run, you can put whatever the time you want. So it is 12 a.m. By default, you can change it and it's going to start from this particular time. And you can see the description here. Occurs every week on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, th Thursday, Friday at 12 a.m. Schedule will be sta used starting on 3-3-2019. So let's click on OK. <coughs> now, if you understand clearly, so I have provided the name in the general section and I added a SQL query in the steps section. I added schedules to the schedule section. So alerts, notification and targets I'll talk in the next video. <clears throat> Let's click on OK. So once you click on OK, if you refresh it, you will be getting a job here. So now my job is already enabled and it runs whenever time reaches 12 a.m. in my calendar every day, every weekday. Okay, currently it is enabled. How to disable it? Right click on a job and there is an option disable it. See, if you enable it, you will look like this. Once you make it as disable, you will get some red symbol here. You click on close. There you will see that it is disabled. There is a red icon. If you understand clearly, there is a red icon on the top of a job. It means that it is disabled. Okay, now if you see here, I have only three jobs in my system or server out of three two are enabled one is disabled see now it is very practice uh, machine it's my personal practice machine that's the reason why i have only three jobs but if you go to the real time projects you will be having 100 200 or 300 jobs in a single server so it, it may be little tricky for you to understand what are all the jobs are there and how to identify schedules Okay, so that time this video might help you. Let me show you first of all how many jobs are there. So in the real time you need to scroll down and up to see the jobs. So let me run that now. So let's go to the MSDB. See whatever the job related actions you do, it will create on the MSDB by default. Now let's go there, select star from sys jobs. So let us see if I run this. Here I'll be getting what are all the jobs which are there in my server. Do you see three jobs are there? Name of the job is sample job, test job and sys policy registry and enabled here. If you see two enabled, one disabled, you can see sample job is enabled, such a sys policy registry is enabled and test job is disabled. And you can see some description, whatever the description I provided there, you can see that. And you can see start step ID and all. Okay. So this is how we see the list of jobs which are available in the SQL Server. If you want to identify only enabled jobs, then you can make it as where enabled equal to one. Let's run this. Then you'll get only enabled jobs. Here I have only two, three. Easily I can say that what is enabled, what is disabled. But in the real time, you will be, you need to write where queries as well to check what are all the enabled, what are all the disabled. If you make it as zero, it is disabled now. Let me execute it. It is disabled. It is disabled. Even you can see by looking at the job itself, you can say that. Now, what are all the schedules? Select star from sys schedules. So let's run this. I have only less jobs here. That is the reason I can directly run this. See, there are by default system jobs might be there. 
there are by default system schedules might be there so let's leave that so now if you see these these are all the system schedules if you see these are all the system schedules okay by default once you install a sql server you will get these schedules nothing to worry and this one so this is a sys policy purge history schedule so there is a schedule has been created for this job as well and that there is one job already existing the name of the job is some sample uh, job that schedule name is run and this is the one which we created this is a schedule you can see this and one thing now here enabled is one schedule is enabled here see we disabled the job but schedule is enabled see there is no meaning of that now so when you, you might ask a question saying that schedule is enabled is my job automatically runs even though job is disabled no even though schedule is enabled job also should be enabled to start or to run the job whenever time reaches okay so now there is a one more table which will help us some more information select star from sys job schedules now if you see this let me run this query yes here see let me run this and this now to identify what is job and all so let me run this both if you see this so job id is this let us say job id is something ff is there yeah this is the one this is the one if you see here this is a test job test job is disabled still schedule id is 10 and you do not have a next run date next run time because of it is disabled if if you have already runs at least one time then you might be having some next run date next run time here but we just created and made it as disabled that is the reason you do not have next run date and next run time now if you take the sample job now this is the one this one so i ran the job that is the reason why it is having next run date and run time so whenever calendar reaches that particular date and time my sample job it automatically starts running it so if you want to join it you have a job id between these you can join that still simply i am joining to understand in a better way you can join it to to see what is linked to what and all so rather than seeing this alpha uh, numerical number so it may be a little typical for us to collate between that and this let's sj dot uh, so job id equal to s yes, dot job id yes now you can put it as a sj dot star if you do not want all or some other only particular columns you can put that even next run time next run date something like that so here you do not want all all means you can put it as name and next run time next run date and time next, put it as that next run time yeah now if i run this query then easily you can see that yes now sample job so the next time is next run date is this and next run time is this test job it did not run even for a single time till now and it there is no next run date and next run time sys policy see there is a next run date and next run time as well and how to enable the job as of now we created some job and we disabled right let's right click and enable it let's simply that now if you want to disable the old one which i created earlier let click and disable this is how we do that this is how we enable disable the jobs and this is how we know the list of jobs available in the server list of schedules available in the server and this is how we join between the sys jobs and sys job schedules to identify what are all the jobs which may run in the near future i can say that so in the near future two jobs are going to run i can see that okay this is how we identify the list of jobs and schedules in the sql server 2016 that's it thank you for watching if you have any questions on sql server msbi azure power bi please comment your questions in the comment section or send a mail to training to sql at the rate gmail.com thank you for watching thank you